Hi, so in this video, I want to talk a little bit about how end devices like PCA here use various protocols, rules to transmit information. So like any device on the network, it actually lives in a bubble. What I mean by that is it only knows information that's either configured with or has obtained by some other method. In this case, PCA does have an Ethernet NIC card. So it knows the MAC address of its Ethernet NIC card that's on the card. By the way, this would be similar for Wi-Fi as well. Now, as far as other information, any IP addressing information, okay, we're going to see this, how it obtains this in a moment, but it's going to, needs to know, it needs to get IP addressing information. We'll see how it does that. Uh, it will also have something called an ARP table. We'll see how that's used in a moment as well. And it also has a DNS cache. We'll see how that's used in a moment as also. Now, all of this information is going to help PCA determine how to forward, how to forward Ethernet frames and packets and data on to other devices. We'll see how all this works. All right, let's take a look here. So first of all, PCA. I said, all it knows is its ethernet MAC address. All right, so what else does it need? It needs IP addressing information. How does it get that? Okay, for IPv4, most client devices use DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. What, that, what happens is when PCA joins the network, it sends out a DHCP discover message. This is an ethernet broadcast the server will send back a DHCP offer. And then it's, we call this Dora, by the way, you see this right up here. The client sends out a discover, the server sends back an offer, the client sends a request, the server sends back an acknowledgement. The result of all this is that PCA gets IP addressing information. We'll take a look at this in just a moment, how, what all of this stuff is. This also helps PCA have its own little routing table. So first of all, PCA has an IP address and a subnet mask. I'm showing it as a prefix length here. What that tells PCA is what network it belongs to. What that means is with this IP address and subnet mask prefix length, it says any devices that have the uh, any packets with a destination IP address of 192.168.1.anything, these first 24 bits, determined by the subnet mask here, if they if the destination IP address is 192.168.1.anything, then we are on the same network. We'll see how that works in a moment. Now, PCA also has the IPv4 address of a default gateway, the local router. What that tells PCA is any packets, the destination IP address for any packets on a network that is not directly connected, not on 192.168.1.0 slash 24, it will send those packets encapsulated in an ethernet frame to the IP address of the default gateway, the MAC address associated with this IP address. What are you saying? We'll see, give it a moment. All right, so uh, the default gateway is 192.168.1.1. That's its local router. The IP address is an IP address on the same local network as PCA. Now, PCA also has the IP address of a DNS server, domain name system server. We'll see how that's used in a moment as well. All right, let's do a simple example. What if PCA, we do a ping to 192.168.1.130? Now, ping is actually a ICMP echo request message. The destination IPv4 address is, well, we, we know the IP address in this case. It's 192.168.1.130. So that's the destination IPv4 address of the packet. PCA recognizes that this address is on its directly connected network. It's on the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network. So it knows, hey, I can reach it directly. 
What that means is I don't have, I can encapsulate this packet in an ethernet frame with the MAC address of this associated with this destination IP address, 192.168.1.130, what I call PCB. So it knows the destination IPv4 address. It knows it's on its local network. Now it just has to encapsulate it in the ethernet frame, but it has to know the MAC address of PCB. Where does it look for that information? Well, it looks for it in its local ARP table address resolution protocol table. This is a table that contains known IP addresses, IPv4 addresses on its local network and its associated MAC address. In this case, we know the IP address, but what we don't know is that MAC address. So this packet has to be put on hold. And what PCA is going to do is send out something called a ARP request. An ARP request is a message that says, hey, who out there is 192.168.1.130? I need your MAC address. This is sent out as an ethernet broadcast. That means the destination MAC address is a broadcast. That means every NIC card on this LAN is going to look at this ARP request to see if it's them or not. And everybody will ignore it except PCB. Now, by the way, the router will not forward this broadcast out to other networks. PCB goes, oh yes, I'm 192.168.1.130. You're looking, you know my IP address. What you need is my MAC address. So it resends this back to PCA as an ARP reply. When PCA receives this ARP reply, it says, is great, I've been waiting on this. Let me put that in my ARP table. I knew the, your IP address. I just didn't know your MAC address. Now I'm all ready to set, send this packet. So let me take the packet off hold. I now will encapsulate this packet in an ethernet frame with the destination MAC address associated with that of the IP address 192.168.1.130. They're on the same network. I can send it directly to you as an ethernet frame. All right, well, that was fairly straightforward, I hope. Let's take a look at another example. In this example, we're going to use a domain name, a URL, www.rickflix.com. This is how we typically interact with devices. All right, so PCA says, all right, www.rickflix.com. Great. Where is it? What's the IP address associated with www.rickflix.com? Where does PCA look for that information? Well, locally, it looks for it in its DNS cache, domain name system cache. It, sees to see, it looks to see if it has the domain name and the associated IP address. Well, we know the domain name is www.rickflix.com, but we don't know the IP address. It's not in the DNS cache. All right, so what PCA has to do here is it says, oh, I have to rely on my DNS server, domain name system server here. The IP address, I know the IP address for that server and I'm gonna send it a query so it can answer this question for me. Give me the answer, who, who is www, what's the IP address associated with this domain name, this URL? All right, so I know the, the IP address of, D, of my DNS server that I need to ask. So let's send it a packet. There's the destination IPv4 address of my DNS server. I'm going to send it a query. And that query is that basically just, hey, what's the IP address associated with www.rickflix.com? Now I got to encapsulate that in an Ethernet frame. Ah, but where is 8888? It's not on my network. Okay. It's on a remote network. I just, I don't know where. PCA doesn't know where, doesn't really care. It just means it knows it's not on its network. So any packets that have to go to another network need to get encapsulated in an ethernet frame and be sent to the local router. So 
the local router is 192.168.1.1. We know the IP address of our local router, but I said it needs to be encapsulated in an ethernet frame with the MAC address associated with the default gateway. So once again, we know the IP address of what device on our network we need to forward this frame to. We know we need we have a packet we need to send to a MAC address, but we don't know the MAC address. We just know the IP address of the device, 192.168.1.1. So again, we look in our ARP table to see, do we know, for the known IP address, do we know the MAC address? Do we know the MAC address associated with our default gateway? We don't. So once again, we got to put this packet on hold. And yes, we're going to send out a ARP request. We're going to send out an ARP request. This time, where the ARP request is asking, who is 192.168.1.1? It has to be an IP address on, a, on my network because I need your MAC address. And again, this, this ARP request is sent out as a broadcast. The destination MAC address is a broadcast. So everybody on this Ethernet LAN, all the NIC cards are going to accept it. See if this ARP request uh, applies to them. Ignore it if it doesn't. And in our case, router R1 will say, oh, yeah, you're looking for my, you know, my IP address. You're looking for my MAC address. All right, no problem. My MAC address is all ones. So let me send that back to you as an ARP reply. Now, PCA receives this ARP reply and says, great, I've been waiting on you. And I'll take that information. I'll put it in my ARP table. Okay, now we have what we need to send out our DNS query. Again, been a, been, been a while, it seems like, right? What this DNS query is, we need to find the IP address associated with this domain name. Okay, we could take this packet off hold now and we can encapsulate it in an ethernet frame, the destination MAC address of our local router. Now at that point, the router receives this, okay, unencapsulates this ethernet frame and forwards the packet on. We don't care about that. PCA says, this is your responsibility router. You're my default gateway. You'll figure out how to get it there. Our DNS server will receive at quad eight, will receive our query. And our query again is, hey, we need the IP address for www.rickflix.com. It will send back a response. And that response will be the IP address for www.rickflix.com, which happens to be, well, we're going to say it's 10.4.3.2. All right, now we finally have what we need, everything we need to send a packet to www.rickflix.com. So here's our packet, destination IP address, 10.4.3.2 with whatever data we're sending. And by the way, if TCP is involved, the data will begin with the TCP three-way handshake. And then we follow by, well, some other stuff, TLS, but eventually an HTTPS GET request. Now, what's important here, though, is PCA is now sending a packet to the web server that we're, that's communicating with, www.rickflix.com. The, the destination MAC address is that of the router. So everything PCA sends, really, for any device on another network, PCA and everybody else on this LAN, by the way, will always encapsulate their packets for IP addresses onto other networks to the MAC address, the destination MAC address of the local router. And from there, it's the router's responsibility. So the packet gets sent in this Ethernet frame to the router, and we get responses back from our www.rickflix.com server and we get to watch videos. I hope you found this helpful. I know there's a lot going on, a lot of different pieces, but just think about this process. You know all the answers. If you've taken a class where you know IP addressing, ARP, 
DNS, Ethernet, you have all the answers. It's sometimes just the questions and the order of questions that you need to ask. All right. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks.